is uh, Ruben Lopez Cotto. I work at INFM Padova. And uh, today I'm going to talk to you about uh, the prospects for, for the search for primordial black hole evaporation using, using uh, the Southern Wide Field of View Gamma Ray Observatory, of, uh, or, or also called uh, SUIGU. So, oops, sorry. Yeah. So, well, first of all, let me give you a, a, a general introduction of this uh, on the search for primordial black holes uh, using very high energy gamma ray observatories. As you know, and as we've seen already in this session, that there are many, uh, exp uh, from the experimental point of view, there are many different techniques in order to try to measure uh, signatures of uh, primordial black holes. And we have, uh, we have many constraints uh, for different uh, uh, masses of these uh, primordial black holes. So, uh, this, uh, so for very high energy gamma rays, we will uh, we have to focus on the signature for for uh, for evaporate of, of for primordial black holes that are evaporating right now. So the black hole uh, evaporation spectrum is already very very well known. So we need to search for this signature in our data. So uh, now let me give you a, a small overall, overall description of uh, all the of all the limits that uh, we have for evaporation right now, and we have actually very good limits for primordial black holes evaporating right now. So we know that uh, primordial black holes with masses of ten to the fourteen grams that uh, are the ones that uh, should be evaporating right now if they were generated in the Big Bang. Uh, we, we have a very good constraint on the um, on the amount of them because if they if they had evaporated uh, a little bit before than now they should uh, have produced a lot of gamma rays and we and we know that uh, this was not the case because of the uh, measurements of the extragalactic gamma ray background that we have so we have very very good uh, very good limits uh, at cosmological distances, at galactic scales, and uh, kiloparsec scales using these gamma rays, also using cosmic ray and isotropy measurements and so on. So we have uh, very good constraints over there. So what can we do better using very high energy gamma rays? So we cannot put constraints better than these ones using very high energy gamma rays. So what is the, the niche of uh, our, our observations? And uh, it is uh, actually to search for serendipitous events that are very nearby. I was talking to you about cosmological scales, uh, galactic scales, and so on and so forth. But on scales of a parsec distances or less than parsec distances, we can search for a uh, primordial black holes that would be evaporating right now and we would be able to detect those signatures with our detectors so there are two type of uh, two types of detectors uh, at these uh, energies you have the white field of view detectors as milagro hawk lasso or the future suigo uh, that have very long exposures but that do not have so much uh, reach and then we have pointing instruments like imaging atmospheric chunk of telescopes, like MAGIC, HES, VERITAS, or the future CTA that uh, have a better reach but do not have uh, so much exposure. So I, I wanted to, uh, since I will be talking about uh, this, uh, these uh, instruments, I wanted to give you a brief uh, description uh, about them. So here you have practically uh, all of them. So as I told you, IACTs, you have very good angular resolution, but a small field of view with which you have a, a smaller exposure. And then with uh, wide field of view instruments, all uh, these uh, volume detectors, detectors, you do not have such a good angular or energy resolution but it is compensated with a very large field of view and the continuous monitoring. It is work and working all the time, practically 24 seven. So these are the instruments that, uh, that are there right now. And actually this slide is a bit old because uh, at the moment we also have uh, instruments like LASSO or the large size telescope of uh, CTA. Mm -hmm. Uh, already operating, but uh, in the future we will have SUIGO. And what is SUIGO? Well, SUIGO is the Southern Wide Field of View Gamma Ray Observatory that will be the next generation of uh, ground-based instruments uh, using the particle detect detection technique. So the SUIGO collaboration uh, was established a couple of years ago 
And since then, we are working on the design and the, on the definition of the science cases that we will uh, we will be able to reach with this observatory. It will be the observatory is still under the design phase, uh, but uh, we are already sure that uh, it will be composed of uh, a dense inner detector and a sparse outer one. And uh, it will be based in water, but uh, the, there are no, uh, we are not ruling out any, any design, uh, um, any same features like uh, doing a hybrid detector, adding, adding, adding um, some things apart from water and so on and so forth. Over there, you have all the countries that are participating in SWIGOS, also the, also the supporting countries. And uh, well, since the observatory needs to be located at an altitude of 4,500 meters in the Southern hemisphere, the only possibilities are South America. And uh, well, over there we are, uh, we are at the moment discussing sites in the Bolivia, Peru, Chile, and uh, Argentina. So now let me go back to the to primordial black holes and uh, well, as I was telling you before, the spectrum of an evaporating black hole at the end of uh, its life is well known. If we uh, if we consider a, a given uh, um, a, a number of uh, a degrees of uh, freedom in the parameters, uh, we already know what is the spectrum that it is going to be produced. And if we assume this uh, a standard evaporation model, I think it is called, that it was, uh, it was presented in Uquata et al., uh, you can see that uh, we perfectly know integ integrating over the uh, over the time that is uh, over there um, depicted in a color scale. We know what is the amount of particles that uh, we are going to get, or what is the the energy the sp in the spectrum that that we are going to get from these uh, primordial black holes. And uh, now, if we convolve this with the instrument response functions of our instrument, what we will, uh, what we will get is what is, uh, first of all, what is the maximum reach of the instrument? And uh, you, may, you may think, okay, if uh, you integrate more time, then you are going to get more photons, then it is better in order to get a larger reach. But this is not the case. You need to, uh, to find the sweet, the sweet spot. Uh, and the trade-off between the integrating time and the background that uh, you are integrating, because, because of course your, your detector is mostly dominated by the background generated by cosmic ray induced events. And uh, this sweet spot is uh, more or less at uh, the time of uh, one second or between uh, one and, and 10 seconds, depending on the uh, assumptions that, uh, that we perform. And uh, this, is the, this is the maximum uh, reach of our observation using SWIGO. And um, I just put you here as a reference that the closest star to us is, uh, most, is located at the distance of uh, one parsec. And we, are, we will be reaching uh, uh, more or less a quarter of that. Uh, the, uh, the maximum reach is not dependent on the total search duration because, uh, because well, this, uh, uh, in, well, whenever we, uh, we add more duration, we will also be adding more trials to, uh, to, our, uh, to, to our search. And therefore, the, uh, well, the dependence is not, uh, is not very strongly correlated to, uh, uh, to, to this total search duration. But of course, the limits will be. And uh, here you have the, the limits for one, five, and 10 years of operations of, uh, of SWIGO for the inner and for the outer array. So for, in order to perform all these calculations, we use a Stroman uh, detector and the Stroman instrument response functions that, uh, we, that we derived in order to study all the science cases that uh, we would like to reach with uh, SWIGO. And uh, the, you can see that the upper limits, uh, we, are, uh, we are getting them, the, the best ones uh, in, on, on the order of between one and 10 seconds integration windows. And uh, <clears throat> so I, I wanted to put you here, the, uh, the limits that uh, you can reach uh, that, that at the moment uh, we have for all ground-based experiments and also some uh, satellite detectors as Fermi. 
And uh, you can see that uh, the best ones for integration windows of less than one second of, or one uh, and 10 seconds are the ones uh, at the moment established by Hawk that are those uh, red diamonds over there. And uh, in the future with Swigo in one year, we will be able to overcome those uh, limits by almost one order of magnitude, thanks to well, the, the large field of view, but also the, the much larger collection area that uh, we will get and uh, some other improvements. We will be able to, uh, to improve those limits in one year and uh, in 10 years, we will be able to reach the level of uh, well, less than 50 bars, bars per year per cubic parsec, already reaching the, the level of a tens of, uh, a tens of a less than tens of bars per year per cubic parsec that uh, has never been reached before by these instruments. So with this, I finalize. So you, you have seen that uh, in the presentation that I've shown that the primary black hole limits derived for for Swigo, for the inner detector, the outer one, and the combined ones that are the most important ones. Uh, with one year, I already showed you that uh, we will be able to overcome the, the three-year results uh, established by Hawk uh, that uh, were, were shown over there. Uh, for 10 years, we will be able to reach less than uh, 50 bars per year per cubic parsec. Uh, the maximum reach of our detector will be 0 0.25 parsecs. And these results uh, will be complementary to the ones that uh, will also be established at similar level, but in the Northern hemisphere by LASSO. So here on the right, you can see all the nearby stars, the reach that we will be able to reach with SWIGO and uh, the, the one that uh, LASSO will be able to establish is going to be on the, on the other side of, uh, this uh, plot. So <clears throat> if you are interested in this work, please uh, go to the uh, to the paper I'm referencing over there because over there you get all the details of all, all these calculations. And that's it. Thank you.